Hello, my name is Julian Hammer and today I will be focusing on input devices that can be found in a workplace. I visited the Technology Innovation Agency and identified three of the input devices that are used in this workplace. The first input device I have identified is the biometric scanner which is situated at the front door to the office. The purpose of this input device is to record the staff's time and attendance. Over here we have the biometric scanner. This particular scanner takes a fingerprint scan which has already been populated or recorded onto the system. So how you would use it is you would insert your finger onto the red panel and it will flash green. The minute it flashes green, it has recorded your time and attendance of your arrival to the office as well as this one situated on the other side of the door which records the time that you leave the office as well. This particular biometric scanner can also be regarded as an output device as it also grants access to the office. So in the same manner you would insert your finger and when it flashes green, the front door to the office will open which allows you access to the office. The biometric scanner's data is stored online and is made available only to the line managers of the organization to be able to monitor their staff's time and attendance. Just to demonstrate, where the data lies online you would need to check go to detail clocking records this view is displayed for the entire organization you would need to filter it for your specific unit that you are searching there we go and this is the view for one individual person. Okay, uh, welcome to my uh, demo video. And today I'm going to quickly show you about how, uh, how to scan a document using the printer and how you can receive it on your laptop. And basically um, how it works is you, we have options here you can copy you can scan you can print so for this case we're going to select the scan or fax uh, the document and the pages I'm going to be scanning today um, put them here on top and it's as simple and just pressing the scan button and the next page you will see I have options here um, where I want the document to go I can put in a um, an email address or I can just put in my email address uh, because the system will uh, knows me already and from there uh, basically um, click on scan and, and voila it goes uh, scan and from here the system is linked to my laptop and the document will go directly to my laptop so now I'm going to show you how to retrie retrieve the documents. And as I mentioned to you that the system has the email address and all that. So the document goes straight into my, my inbox. Um, and um, we will see now when I open the document. So here's an email on my inbox and from there we are able to receive the document in PDF uh, format and we can then work with it uh, as we please. Good day, I'm going to show you how to conduct a virtual meeting using Skype for Business. Um, so you can have meetings with people anywhere in the world. So we have selected a meeting room by clicking on the relevant link. And then now I'm going to join with the other party by pressing the start my video. I'm conducting a meeting with my colleague Ilona who will be connecting with us shortly. Hello, that's the order team, Ilona, Alicia and yeah. We are Demonstrating meeting via Skype for Gillian. <laughs> Output devices 
computer output devices receive information from the computer and carry data process from the computer to the users. Output devices provide data in different forms, some of which include audio, visual or hard copy media. All computer output devices are peripheral hardware and are connected to the computer by cables or wireless networking. Here at TFG Design Center, we identify three of these output devices. One, the automatic sewing machine. Two, the plotting machine. And three, more commonly used in most workplaces, the printer. And then when you come back, you can do the end of the stitching. And then I go on my own. Two things happen there now. The cotton cut, the bottom machine, the foot, the pressure foot lifts up. Automatically because it's, it's modern technology. Now just go to that machine, just go to that machine there and then you will just use the needle the way. I don't have one. Hmm. You can video that one there. I was about to tell her that when I was just sitting in your team of the pressure foot. Okay, that would be for the bobbin winder, that's for back tacking. So she can set the machine if she wants the machine to start with a back tack and it will end with a back tack. It's her preference what, what she wants for her garment or the, or the operation. This here would be for the tension. Normally you turn the tension here, you see, but you see there's no knob to turn. You can set your tension electronically and by sitting in there. And what, what is, well, why I say you don't really need a screwdriver? It is because, you see this here is for your feed arm. So there are certain types and types of material where you'll need a feed arm a little bit lower, a little bit higher. So there you can sit it there. You can sit it either to the tilt of feed arm on both sides, you know, but you can do it electronically. That is the purpose of um, that um, being good. Um, what more can I say? You can set your stitches. Um, also, you don't find a knob here, but on this panel here you will find where you can set your stitches. The, how many stitches per centimeter? You can get it there.
So we're going to release it now. Let's go. Okay, So we're releasing the documents. You want to come closer? I want to release. Thank you,